Hey y'all! Well today I'm going to toss out there another pretty controversial video. And I just want to tell y'all my personal opinion. And this isn't going to be really based on factual data. And I'm not going to be showing like, you know, oscilloscope patterns and, you know, tests from the Analog Discovery 2 or anything like that. This is going to be just my subjective opinion and just kind of a, ah, didn't want to really do this on a Monday monologue. I thought this deserved kind of its own standalone video. And it's solid state versus tubes. And when do I think one versus the other makes sense? And when they don't make sense? And I'm going to start off with when solid state 100% makes sense. If you're wanting some really high power, high sound pressure levels, like in a music venue or some place where, you know, like a club or a bar or you've got a, you know, a house where you're going to have a really big party outdoors kind of a thing where you need some serious power and some serious sound pressure levels, it makes zero sense to go with tube gear. Solid state can put out so much more clean power for a whole lot less money than you can with any kind of tube gear. It just doesn't make any sense. Another place to me that doesn't make sense to try to use tube gear is if you got something like those MagnaPan speakers that are super high current hungry kind of speakers that were designed for high powered solid state amplifiers. It doesn't make any sense to try to drive them with tube gear. Even like push pull 100 watt KT150 or whatever. I'd still use solid state amps and then use something like a color preamp or some kind of other tube preamplifier to inject some harmonics into it if that's the kind of sound you want. The other time that I wouldn't recommend tubes, I get some folks making these kind of comments in my videos about how they believe that there should be no distortion and that the output of the amplifier should just be like a wire with amplification where it's the exact same signal that came in, comes out, and you're driving it to some speakers that are designed to be, you know, perfectly neutral and measure flat, and there's no difference from the source to what's coming out of your speakers. You don't want tube gear. There's no point in having tube gear. There's no point in building tube gear that does that because solid state gear can do that and is much more efficient, doesn't have tubes that you have to replace, doesn't make a ton of heat in your room, and, you know, maybe in the 1950s it made sense to build those kind of tube amplifiers because that's what people were leaning towards or moving in that direction, and today it doesn't make any sense. So now I'm going to talk about when tube amps do make sense and what they should be. And again, this is my personal opinion. If you're going to go down the tube rabbit hole and you want that kind of warmth and the second order harmonics that a good tube amp can put into a system, use a single ended tube amp. I just really don't understand the point of getting like these high powered push pull tube amps where you have the self-canceling that the push-pull does because that's what solid-state amps do and then you put a bunch of global negative feedback in it trying to get the harmonic distortion down to as close to zero as possible at the listening levels that you're using just use a solid-state amp it doesn't make sense to me to be going with this old technology and then trying to replicate what a solid state amp is good at. 
you're going to use tubes, use tubes and listen to the tubes and have the tubes have some harmonic distortion. Build something like one of these, you know, triode amps that has zero negative feedback. Or something like my EL34 amp that I'm selling that has ultralinear taps to try to get some more power out of the EL34 tubes, but then has some local negative feedback to tame like the extreme distortion, but you still get the good second order harmonics that comes out of the outputs of it to your speakers. And for God's sake, Get some high efficiency speakers. I mean, I'm not talking about that they got to be these 100 dB plus speakers like Eclipse Forte or, you know, these giant boxes. And I know people rag on me, but and maybe it's my 65 year old ears, but I like the way those Eclipse RP600M sound, especially the first version. And yeah, they're bright. My ears aren't bright anymore. And looking at the demographics in my YouTube analysis, most of you guys are over 60 years old, too. And, yeah, the stuff that I'm designing and the speakers that I like, they might not sound good to someone that's 25 years old. But 25-year-olds aren't watching my channel. And so this advice I'm giving you should be relevant to most of you folks that are you know, 50 plus that your high frequency hearing has rolled off some and you need a little boost to make stuff sound lively and fresh. And so that's part of where I'm coming from. And I know there are these old guys that want to pretend like that they've got these magic ears. They don't. Age doesn't discriminate. And Nobody has the hearing of an 18-year-old when they're 60-plus years old. We're all in the same boat. So let's don't pretend like that, you know, these, they're not all that old, but there's a lot of older hi-fi reviewers out there, and I guarantee none of those folks have the hearing of an 18 or even a 30-year-old. So... That's part of what we're dealing with is just we're an older generation that needs some help with the gear to get it back sounding like we remember. And I don't want to be one of those reviewer, influencer, whatever you call me, one of those people that pretends like that I'm still physically the same as I was 30 years ago. That's just not reality. So... Anyway, back to the two versus solid state. If you need these 45 watt KT88 push pull amps like the R8, honestly, guys, just go get a solid state amp and then get a preamp to inject whatever color that you want into the system and don't try to do it with the output amplifier but for me I would rather have something like this 300b amp or my EL34 amp and then just have the phono stage hooked to the input of it all these amps that I'm building and designing and showing you guys how to build have very simple signal paths and it's the same thing like with that UFO deckware amp that people love. Part of the reason that people love it is because it's got a simple, short signal path that there's only a handful of parts in. And when you build amps like that, the parts matter. And that's part of what I try to do on this channel is I try to do this experimentation with the parts like I showed you with those caps. Don't use a WEMA cap on one of these kind of amps you want to use that solene cap on the power supply because it totally changes the way the amp sounds and i know that there's a lot of folks out there that will argue that like coupling caps don't make any difference if you really dig into what those folks are doing and what kind of builds they're doing they're doing these more complex 
push-pull amps that have a bunch of global negative feedback that have almost zero distortion and I don't doubt that you don't hear any difference in the parts and I don't doubt that when you swap tubes it doesn't make any difference we saw that with the R300 it uses a bunch of global negative feedback but by doing that put these tubes in the cheap PS fans the Western electric tubes they all sound the same same thing with the driver tubes you go out and get these fancy new old stock ones or the cheap Russian ones they all sound the same because the way the amps designed it doesn't let the character of the tubes come out and that's the other thing that I really feel like is a big benefit with using tube amps is you can tailor the sound to your taste by swapping tubes but the only time that works is if you're using limited or no negative feedback and especially that global negative feedback to me neutralizes the difference in the tubes so yeah that's kind of where I ended up on this thing and again I don't have anything against solid state amps but I do know that I had a newfound enjoyment of music when I started listening to tube amps and I never was really a big fan of jazz music until I started listening to jazz music on a tube amp and it just brought it to life and it's just got that holographic 3D I called it audio VR but yeah there's something to that where you can just close your eyes and the speakers disappear and I had a customer had solid state mono blocks to some you know fairly inefficient speakers that bought one of my color preamps and that's what he said happened when he plugged it in he said the speakers disappeared and that's what tubes can do so whether you do it in the preamp or whether you do it on the output I think you can get to the same place doing it either way and another thing that I've told folks is don't try to use something like a colorful tube preamp with a colorful power amplifier you want to do one or the other and so like with this 300B or even my EL34 amps, they've got enough harmonic distortion naturally where they don't need that. And I had somebody that wanted, he goes, I want to buy your photo stage and your color preamp and your EL34. And I talked him out of it. I said, no, don't do that. It's going to be too much of a good thing. And so for him, I'm building him a KT88 integrated that's more like my KT120 mono blocks that have a lot lower harmonic distortion that can use the color that that preamp adds to the signal. And hopefully this doesn't create a bunch of controversy in the comments, but who knows what will happen. But I do think that a straight solid state system to me just it sounds boring and I like the life that tubes put into the sound so whether you're doing it in the preamp or whether you're doing it with like a 300B I think tubes can bring some life into a system so I mean I think I could go on and just kind of end up going in circles here talking more about this so I think that kind of covers what I was trying to get across and again I'm not trying to like back this up with measurements and I'm not doing a B testing so you know I'm sure some folks are gonna throw that out in the comments and that's fine but I just know what I like the sound of and I feel like that if you're not going to get what a single ended amp brings to the table and you need the power just get a solid state amp and deal with the you know the signal manipulation elsewhere and if you don't want any manipulation of the signal just from ethical reasons or that whole you know I want it to sound like what the artist intended 
then don't buy tube gear. And don't try to look for tube gear that does that because you might as well just use solid state, save the electricity and the heat, unless you just want to use one of these things to heat your house. So, there we go. So anyway, promise this video. Hope you guys enjoyed my take on this. Thank you for supporting my channel. If you enjoyed the video, please like, please subscribe. Thanks to all you Patreon folks. The other folks that do things to support the channel, like sending me gear to review and that sort of thing. And until the next video, have a nice day. Bye.